Hi everybody, this is Christina from Once Upon a Hook and Yarn. Today we're going to be doing something fun. I figured since Halloween is coming, it would be a perfect time to do uh, a video instruction of how I make my crochet back case. So bear with me here as we get started. Um, what you're going to need is basically a black yarn. I picked this one here that has these little uh, black kind of like a, uh, I call it glitter, but it's a shimmery strand that runs through it. It gives it a nice little spooky uh, feel. Next, you're gonna need a crochet hook. Um, I'm using the Clover brand, and then the size is G 4.0 millimeter. Next, you're gonna need some sort of scissors or um, in my case, I prefer to use these little snips. I found these at Hobby Lobby um, and I absolutely love them. Next, you'll need a, a yarn needle. So I've got my little holder and the Tamagotchi, which you want to make this case fit. Um, in this case, we're going to use the Tamagotchi on a magic version as I figured it was a perfect combination. All right, let's get started. So first we're gonna make a magic loop. So I'm gonna find the end of the yarn here. All right, so you're gonna make your magic loop. And then chain one. There we go. Now we can get started. You're gonna do six single crochet into the magic loop. So one, Two, three, four, five, oh, lost it, and six. All right, so once you have your six single crochet, you're just going to pull this string here nice and tight so that it closes the loop and then as, as you can see there's no more hole in the center. Um, working with black yarn is a little bit difficult if you've not done it before. Um, you can try to make this with a different color if you prefer but um, with some practice I think it can be done just fine. So next we're going to do is slip stitch to our beginning chain one. And as I work, you'll see I like to hide my ends as I go. I feel it also makes the foundation row a little bit um, more sturdy or durable. So what we're going to do is go ahead and work two single crochet into each stitch around. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and as you can see as I'm going, I'm basically crocheting over the top of that um, strand hanging out. So seven, eight, nine, ten, And then 11, 12. Now instead of joining with your first stitch from the last row, the beginning of the row, you're basically going to keep going. So it's going to create kind of a spiral. Um, and in doing that, you're not going to have a, a visible seam. And you'll see it looks a lot nicer, at least in my opinion. Um, if you need to use a stitch marker, you can, but um, really, I, I honestly go by feel as I'm going when I make these. I don't always follow my own pattern. Um, I do to a certain point, um, but if I notice that the yarn I'm working with is a little bit more tight or looser, um, then I'll adjust accordingly. So the next row, you're going to start by doing two single crochet in the first stitch 
and then we're gonna single crochet in one and then two in the next and what you'll start to see as well which is a good rule of thumb is before each increase that you're doing you'll see the increase from the prior row so it's always going to be in this stitch before with my pattern so basically we're going to do this around so let's go ahead and do one single crochet two tuck this end in so one two That's the end of that round. The next one, we're gonna do one more row of increase. So then this next row, since we've already got a, a double or two single crochets in this stitch before, we're gonna do single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, and then do two in the following. And what this does is, is it keeps that more of a perfect circle instead of it having too many increases on one side. So we're going to continue this pattern, single crochet, single crochet, and then put two and just keep going all the way around. So one, one, two. so we're at the end of this row um, what helps me too in knowing where we're at since I don't like to use stitch markers is you can see where the first stitch is it's kind of hard with the black but you'll you'll know what I mean if you've worked in the round before um, so I can see my first stitch and I kind of just go upwards and uh, another rule of thumb too is for whatever model Tamagotchi you're making I find that I only increase until you about reach the sides of the Tamagotchi, not necessarily top and bottom because those are going to stretch and we're also going to add in a charm hole. So um, that will also increase a little bit in that row as well, which you'll see as we move on. So now that I know I've got to the size that I want it, we are basically going to um, single crochet around a couple of times until we reach uh, the charm hole. That's what I use as my gauge. It does vary with different yarns, so um, it's not always on the same exact row unless you're using the same um, size or weight of yarn. So basically just go ahead this round we're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So this should be pretty easy. You'll see a nice circle forming. This is such a fun case. I really hope you guys like it. Alright, we're about more than halfway. Keep going around. Alright, 
so I've got that size. Um, with each row, I like to keep measuring it just to make sure we're on track. So I do this with any model but for this one. So I know I need to do another round before I can add that charm hole. So let's single crochet around one more time. Almost there, keep going. Gotta say, it's definitely very interesting to try and crochet with a camera in, in between your arms. <laughs> Those of you that have filmed videos before, I'm sure you know. <laughs> All right, we're almost back all the way around. There we go, it's a nice stopping point. All the way out there, okay. All right, so now I know, um, just from experience, once it starts to make this shape with the Tamagotchi on, this is gonna be the row that I'm gonna do my charm hole. And you can see what I mean by here. So we can see when you line it up across the back, it's got the perfect placement for this. And now what I like to do, because I like to make sure that my end of the row is always at the bottom of the shell, um, what we're gonna do is basically work our way up until that charm hole and then make our little chain space for that there. Um, you can do this either direction. I just find it, I get a little bit better fit of the case when I finish down here. Um, and when you do your little invisible bind and whatnot, it's less, I guess, less likely to be seen down here at the bottom than it would at the top. Since you're playing with it, your fingers are gonna kind of cover it. Whereas for me, it kind of annoyed me when I would see the seam at the top there, so. Fun fact. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is basically crochet until you get to about the halfway point down here <clears throat> and then we'll line it up on the back of the shell and make sure that we're placing it where we want it. So single crochet about halfway around. <clears throat> Perfect, okay. You don't wanna go all the way there because you want that kind of halfway spot. Like you can see the, the first stitch here. You want that to be straight facing downward. So <clears throat> the way I do this is line it up so I can see my first stitch here. I want that lined up with the center towards the bottom. And then I know by looking at this, I've got this lined up nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and basically skip these two stitches and then crochet into the next. So let's chain two since we're skipping two stitches. So one, two, and then this is my secret um, that I'm giving away here. <laughs> so I find that if you do a single crochet like this, when you're using an item, you can kind of see this um, string hanging out here. And I didn't like that because I felt like over time, this little piece could get worn down, especially if you're putting charms on and off. Um, so what I do is a half double crochet, um, and I do this on all buttonholes as well. Um, it just helps make a nice clean look. So you're gonna yarn over, go through the loop, Pull up one loop and then pull through all three with that yarn over. And it, it's the same height roughly as a single crochet, but you can see now when you look at it up close, there's no string hanging out right there. So it looks very nice and clean when you're finishing up your work. And we're gonna go ahead and single crochet back down to the bottom. 
of the case. Almost there. Perfect. So back down to the beginning. So we've got the start of the charm hole right there. And this next row, you're just gonna single crochet all the way around. And then I'll show you how I go over the charm area so that you can see it just gives it a nicer finished look because there's two different ways to crochet over chained areas that I've seen over the years. So let's go ahead and single crochet all the way up until you get to that chain two space. Um, so now a lot of people, when you're crocheting over a chain two space, they tend to go in here from what I've seen and just crochet two. You can do that. Um, I do that with fluffier yarns that's less noticeable. It's just easier to find the loop sometimes. But um, if you want it to have a nice polished look, what I do is I actually go through the two stitches at the top, just like you would with a foundation chain or, or a beginning chain. So you're going to go ahead and do single crochet in each one. And then when you get to this last one here, make sure you don't skip this one. So we end up putting three stitches into the charm hole. And that's that last increase that's going to kind of provide the shape that we need for the top of the Tamagotchi. So now go ahead and crochet all the way back down to the bottom. Single crochet. I'm sorry if this isn't perfectly lined up here. I'm trying my best so that I can show you guys. Don't mind my cat. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear her, but she's meowing. Okay. All right, so we're back down now. So this is a good point to um, stop and make sure that your case is um, becoming the right size for the Tamagotchi that you're making it. So I go ahead and just slide it on, try to line the charm hole up. Perfect. So you can see that goes perfectly. And now what we're going to do is basically start to do some decreases so that it, it starts to wrap around the front of the case and becomes more secure. So what we're going to do is like this. So we start our decreases at the bottom center. So you can kind of fold it in half too to see if you're right where you want to be. Like I'm one stitch too far, so I'm going to pull one out. All right. So to do your decrease, I do um, a, I don't know how exactly you call it, but I, I learned this many many years ago i just call it a single crochet decrease if you know what it's called feel free to let me know in the comments um, but basically what i do is go through the front loop of the single crochet yarn over pull one loop up go in the next one yarn over pull a loop up oh didn't mean to drop it and then pull it through. And what this does is as you work, I find it's less noticeable and it doesn't leave as big of a gap as if you do two um, single crochets together through the both loops. Um, you could do whatever works for you. So if you prefer to do a different type of decrease, you're welcome to do so. Um, it really doesn't matter size wise. This is just to give it more of a finished, nice polished look. So we single crochet two together. Now you're going to single crochet one, two, three, four. I'm going to find this is a good size. So now we're going to do the same type of decrease. 
So yarn through there. So you've got three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through those three. Got it. Now we're gonna single crochet again. One, two, three, four. We're gonna do a decrease again. Oh my gosh, I messed up you guys. Let me go back and show you what I just did. Okay, so I'm going back down to the center. See if I can edit that out later, but if not. In talking, trying to explain, I did the wrong type of decrease. So the way that, that I'm doing it right here is just basically grabbing the front loop, grabbing the front loop of the next stitch, and then yarn over, pull through both of those, and finish it off so it looks like you're doing a single crochet into those two spaces. That's how it's supposed to be. One, two, three, four. All right, so decrease again, go through the front loop, go through the front loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There it is. I apologize. So one, two, three, four, decrease. And your decrease should be right at the top of the charm haul. Now we're going to crochet four again. So one, two, three, four. Do one more decrease. And then single crochet. One, two, three, four. All right. So you should be back towards the bottom again. Yes. So this is the size that you want it to be. It does, I mean, it looks like it's a little bit smaller than the actual shell, which is what you want because you want it to, to fit snug around the shell. So um, we are now on the very last row. And what you're gonna do is just single crochet all the way around. And I like to do that so that the decrease row is not the last row. Um, just because it, it looks a little bit better when you look at the shaping of it at the end. So go ahead and just single crochet all the way around. Back to the top. And if you're not using a stitch marker, the way that I tell when I'm back at the center is obviously I, I follow that line, but you can also take and fold it directly in half where the charm hole is, and then you can see where you're at too. So I know I need to go one and two more stitches, and this should be the last one. Perfect. So the way that I uh, bind my work off is like this. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, yarn through, and then just do a slip stitch. And we're not done yet. Now you're going to need your yarn snips or scissors and cut off a tail, I don't know, about four inches is good. And then you're going to pull that through all the way. Now, if you're not sure that this is it's the right size for your Tamagotchi, this is a good point to stop and put it on as well, just to make sure before you go ahead and hide that seam all the way. So, 
put it on, line up the charm hole, pull up the sides and make sure it's nice and snug. And remember, we're gonna, we're gonna bind this off too so the bottom will be a little bit more snug once we're done. But that's what it should look like. So there's your charm hole. And it should fit around the edges of the case nicely. And if not, you just kind of tug it up a little bit. If you find your case is uh, too loose, then what you'll want to do is go back a row, go back to the uh, decrease row, and then instead of spacing four, try um, doing three single crochets in between each of your decreases. Um, I find with this particular yarn, which is the Hobby Lobby, um, I love this yarn, that's the, the number of decreases I like to use on mine for the type of fit. So what you're gonna do next to hide your final stitch here is, um, I believe it's called an invisible join. So once you do your slip stitch, we're gonna turn this into a stitch as well so that you can't see the way you know it, it is. Because if you just leave it like this, you can kind of tell it's uneven when you look at it like that. Um, and when you look at it from above, wherever you hide this yarn, you will inevitably see that final stitch. And I don't like that. So um, especially for cases that I'm selling or, or things that I'm giving away, I always like to make sure that it has a nice polished look. So what you're gonna do is basically um, hold your case like this, so the charm holes right here. You want the, the inside is where you're gonna go from inside to outside. So if you look at the top of the stitches, you'll see the one that this is joined to, and then we're gonna go in the one that's like directly next to it. So go in between here, pull your yarn through, and now you're gonna go up into this, um, the final stitch here through the top, or bottom to top. And then now you're gonna go back through this same stitch from the outside to the inside and pull it through nicely. Kind of adjust your work. And then you can see when you look at it up close, it just looks like another single crochet. So it has a very nice look. Um, and then I like to kind of, you know, wiggle them around a little bit. And then with use, you'll see that it's got a nice flat uh, finish here so it looks very nice and um, what I do now is flip it inside out and then to hide the yarn I'll show you the way that I do it so what I do is I go in this um, what do you call it horizontal portion of the back of that single crochet so put your yarn straight through there kind of tug it through I like to hold hold my work too as I'm pulling so I'm not inadvertently um, tugging other stitches. So next you're going to go through the um, vertical or what looks like kind of like an upside down V. And I go through both loops under a couple of these stitches. So let's do, there's three and a half. So we'll go through those. Maybe do one more. Four is a good number. It's a good amount of space to kind of hide your seam. Okay, so next you're gonna do is, um, instead of going back in the same spot where this yarn is coming out, you're gonna skip over this one portion of the stitch, what, what I was calling the upside down V, and basically go back through the other loops going over the same spot where you were working about four stitches and pull it through. And what that does is it prevents you from having that case um, come undone and it does secure it in a nice way. So snip it very carefully as close as you can to that and then kind of rough it up a little bit. <laughs> There we go. Make sure everything looks nice around your seams. Okay, we'll go ahead and stick it on the Tamagotchi now. There we go. 
and it should fit like so, kind of like a, a beanie or a sock. <laughs> so it fits nice and tight. Um, not too tight that it's, you know, gonna be really hard to put on, but tight enough that if you were to toss it in your bag or your backpack or whatever, that um, it is not gonna come off. So that's a good, good size. So there you go. That's how I make my basic case. Now we're gonna move on to the um, wings and the ears. So I like to do my wings first. And to do that, um, you're going to chain 13. So we're gonna go ahead and make your little slip knot and chain 13. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. All right, so you should have thirteen chain. All right, next thing we are going to do is count back um, three, I believe. So including the one up here, we're gonna go one, two, three. And you're going to single crochet one, two, three, four, perfect. And what we're doing is we're basically, when I flipped over the work, we're working in the one loop on the back of the chains because that's gonna give the wing the, a nice edge. Um, and as you'll see, once we work it up, this will look like a nice uh, pointed shape. Okay, so we've got four single crochet. The next thing we're going to do is um, some shaping to give the bend here. So I'm gonna go through one loop, pull up the yarn, go through the next loop, pull up the yarn. You should have three loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through three. And then we're gonna copy this into the next two stitches as well. So go through, yarn over, pull one through. Kind of go through there, yarn over, pull one up. You've got three loops on the hook again and go. And that's why I was getting confused on the decreases earlier because I had just made one of these. So there's two different types of decreases that I use. Um, this one I like better on the wings because it pulls it in nicely and then it gives it that um, shaping that we need. Uh, so the next here you're going to see you've got four stitches left. So we're going to go ahead and just single crochet four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so you've got to the end of your row here. You're gonna chain one and turn your work over. And now you can kind of see it's got a nice little shape. That's gonna be the top of the wing up here. So now we need to finish filling in the bottom part. And what you're gonna do next is um, single crochet into that same stitch so this chain does not count as a stitch towards the count. So go one, two, three. And now we're gonna make the first little, um, I guess it's like a, finger kind of on the wing or like the shape. So to do that, you're going to go uh, chain three. So one, two, three, and we're going to make kind of a little spike. So now you're going to go back through that first chain, yarn over, and then do a single crochet right there as well. 
and that makes a nice little spiky thing. So you're going to single crochet once in the next stitch. So it should look a little bit like this. Try to show you where we're at. So this, this is where that other chain three and the single crochet makes that nice little um, shape right there. So next we're going to do another decrease in these next two stitches so that we keep this shape. So we're going to go ahead and go through uh, the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then go through the next, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through all three. Okay, so that'll help us keep that shaping. You're going to single crochet in the next stitch, and then you'll see it just looks nice. So single crochet in one more. There we go. And now we need to do another little spike here. So you're going to chain three again. One, two, three. And then back through the underside of that first chain and single crochet. And then single crochet in one more. And then you can kind of see that your wing has taken shape. I like to bend it a little bit so that it, it looks more batty. <laughs> All right. And then in the last stitch remaining, you're basically just going to slip stitch to the tip of that wing and then snip off the end of the yarn. So as we do, um, once we do the invisible join on here as well, you'll see it'll make a nice little shape. So that's what the wing should look like. Now we're going to make one more of the exact same thing. Chain 13, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right third chain from the hook a single crochet one, two, three, four. decrease Another decrease. And then single crochet in the remaining four. Two. Three. Four. Okay, chain one. Turn over, single crochet into the next three stitches, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet back into the beginning of that stitch, single crochet one, Decrease. One, two, chain three, single crochet at the base of that chain three, single crochet, and slip stitch in the last stitch. 
So we've got both wings done now. Perfect. We are almost done. Now we're going to start assembling our bat. So to do that, we're going to put the ears on. Um, and I, I actually crochet the ears straight onto the case while it's on the Tamagotchi to make sure that the placement is exactly where I want it. And we're going to basically do a three stitch space. So wherever you want your ears to be, you want to make sure to kind of look and place them accordingly. Um, on mine, I like to use this row at the top of the um, charm hole. And it just lines up nicely when you turn it over, then the ears are towards the, the front here. But not too close to the edge. So, what I'm going to do is I've located here, if you look at it up close, there's one, two, and three stitches. So this is where I'm going to crochet into. So I put the yarn or the hook through that stitch. And I'm gonna pull the yarn through. It's a little bit tricky, but I find this looks better than if I make them and then crochet them on afterwards because they're so tiny. Um, it just works out nicely. So, uh, pull through so it's secure. Now, next thing we're gonna do is do three double crochet into this next stitch here. Wait, I lied. That's one double crochet and then chain three. One, two, three. Kind of like the tip of the bat wing. So single crochet at the base of that chain three and then do another double crochet in that same stitch. And this should give us the little ear that we're hoping for. Let's see. Okay, and then in the last stitch here, try to go through the thing and single crochet. So that gives us a nice little triangle shape which is what you want for the little bat case. Okay. So I'm going to trim off that edge, pull the yarn out of that, and I like to fold it out of the way. So since we used the edge stitch and the two following, I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side. So I'm going to start my ear right here. Pull the yarn through, do, try not to drop it, <laughs> okay, now in the next stitch you're going to do a double crochet, got it, chain three, Do a single crochet back at the base of that first chain. Yarn over, do another double crochet through that same stitch. So it's kind of like doing a post stitch if you've done those before. And I find setting your work down, it tends to help because we're working with the Tamagotchi in here. It's a little bit heavier than just um, when you're crocheting with the yarn. So the next stitch, we do a single crochet. And I check for placement, they look good. Cut that off. And now, you kind of hold your yarn ends out of the way. You can kind of see where the ears are. And just like any crochet work, you can always, you know, shape them with your fingers a little bit to try to get the little shape that you want. Uh, but that's what they're going to look like. Once we get them um, sewn in the rest of the way, then you won't have this little lip anymore. So that'll be hidden nicely. So that's good. Uh, next, we are going to sew the wings on. 
So we'll get the crochet hook out of the way. So what I do first, I like to hide the, um, the yarn from the end of the wing because we're not going to need this anymore. So go ahead and thread your needle. And we're going to do this uh, similar um, ending as we did with the case. But since we're at the point or at the edge of something, it's just a tiny bit different. So I'm going to go through that um, stitch on the edge of the wing back through your last stitch and then back through the end of that wing stitch. So it'll give it a nice shape and now you just hide your yarn. There's no particular rhyme or reason or anything. I just, I go behind about four or five stitches one direction until about the peak and then turn around and work your way back through. Um, you skip one little thing and then go back through. And that'll give you a nice secure finish. Pull that through. He's good to go. With the black yarn too, I mean it's less noticeable. You're not gonna see um, as much as you would. It does obviously tend to pick up a bit of fuzz, but you can always fluff it out later. So that is what your wing should look like once you've hidden the, the ends in on the side. Um, if you want it to be more pointed, just kind of pinch the edges together and then you'll get that look that you're after. There we go. So we've got one done. Go ahead and do the same with the other wing. Makes it kind of nice when there's repetition when you're doing your work. Okay, so go through the end, stitch, back through your first stitch, and then back through the end stitch. So same exact thing we just did. And try to hide your yarn ending here. Clean it up a little. Now you don't want to pull it too tight because then it's going to pull the tip of this wing inward. So um, if you find it starts to get a little too rounded, you can just tug it a little so that the string stretches through those stitches. And I'm going to go back through. All right. And trim this off. There we go. So we've got our second wing now. Looks like got a little strand sticking out, a little straggler. I'm gonna trim that out. There we go. Perfect. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the wings on. And this is all personal preference. I've had customers request the wings to be up closer to the ears. Um, but most of the people that have requested this case seem to like the way that I do my version. So let's go and I'll show you why at the end. It's super cute. Oh my gosh. Don't be like me. Thread your yarn nicely. Oh my gosh. Can't do it with my hands in front of the camera. Okay, we're back. So we've got the yarn through the needle, and now we're basically gonna uh, pick a side that you want to sew it onto first. So I like to go right side, just out of habit, and I line mine up kind of. Um, if you look at the screen, you can see. So it kind of goes towards the bottom. And you want to go in the same row or just in front of where your ears are placed. So I'm going to go on this row, which is the third to last row. 
so we've got our placement i want it about right there you're basically just gonna sew these on and it doesn't really matter where you go what part of the stitch as long as you do the same thing three times and then go through and now this time we're going to go up through the bottom and sew it on as close to the edge of the wing as you can And then the last stitch, you're gonna go through there. And then I like to go through one more time so that it pulls it nicely at the bottom. Okay, so there's one. I'm gonna grab the other wing here and do the same thing, but on the other side. Just want to make sure at this point that you're lining it up the same as the other side so that way they're lined up nicely let's go ahead and sew this on So now everything is situated where it needs to be. Uh, wings look fairly even. Ears look nice and even. Now we're gonna basically go and finish up our case hiding the ends. So to do that, I like to bring uh, the yarn, all of the ends on the inside. So let's go. With the wings, you can kind of use your crochet hook to tug those inward, get them out of the way. It's definitely harder with black yarn, but not impossible. So we're just tugging the ends to the inside of the case. Now I've got all of my ends towards the inside. Um, you're gonna turn it inside out. And now we have some ends to hide. So it's a little tedious because there's a, a lot of small pieces that you know are, are sewn on to here, but um, now that we just need to sew these in, you are almost there. So you're close to the finish line. <laughs> Let's just finish these up real quick here. And then we'll show what the case looks at the end. So just do a simple weaving to hide your, your ends. Same with everything else, I just go through about three or four stitches one direction, go back through the other, and then cut off the excess. So do the same with all of your ends. And at this point, you can skip forward to the end if you just want to see what it looks like, but I figured I would go for the full experience here and do a kind of a crochet along so you can see how I do things the way that I do, because these are harder to explain in written patterns. It's much easier to just show. <laughs> Plus, you get little tips and helpful things along the way as you go. Almost done. This yarn is 
super fuzzy. back through I try as hard as I can not to do too much around the charm hole because you want that area to be nice and clean and plus it's gonna get used if you know the person is using a lanyard or something often we want to make sure it's as durable as possible okay get those out of the way and I've got three more I wanted to try to keep this under an hour, but we're getting close. I'm sorry, guys. But this is also the first crochet along that I'm doing, so I hope you guys like it. Um, if you want to see other cases that I make, feel free to tell me in the comments. And as I, as I learn here how to record what I'm doing, I will try my best to to show you guys, since I don't have a lot of patterns written out for many of my cases, I can at least show you, and you can crochet along with me. I find that it's really useful. Um, I've been crocheting since I was 13, mind you, but um, as I was, you know, older, once I learned about YouTube and things like that, as they came out, it was super helpful to go in there to be able to kind of watch somebody crochet something or, or a stitch maybe that's confusing or that I don't know. And then I would learn from them as well that way since I didn't have anybody that really was um, an intermediate crocheter in my you know family or immediate family circle. So I did have to teach myself a lot of what I know. Um, and watching videos is helpful because as you're going, if, if it starts to get, you know, if they get too far ahead of you or if you get confused, you can just hit pause and go back. And I find that's really helpful. So I wanted to do the same and kind of pay it back now that I've figured out how to make my own channel. <laughs> Little late to the party, but better late than never. All right, so now we've got everything sewn in. I'm gonna cap my scissors so I don't have any accidents. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what the finished product looks like. So, what do you think? Do you guys like his design? Let's see, make sure it's all lined up. My charm hole's where it needs to be. I like that my cases go up and around the edge. If you don't, you can push it down a bit, but I find it looks nice when they kind of go up to the edge of the shell. Yay. All right, so here is my batty bat case. There's the front and back. It's got little wings, a charm hole. And what I think is super cute, what I said earlier I wanted to show you guys, why I place them where I do is because I like to fold the wings over on mine. It looks like he's kind of hugging himself, but that also kind of helps protect the front as well. So um, whenever I'm going to take this particular case with me on the go, I'll fold those wings up as I put them in his pouch or wherever, and that way you can use it. Because I tend, I mean, I, I do the same case with a front cover as well, but it doesn't look as nice to me because the... Um, it kind of takes away from the ears and the bottom of the wing since the, the front thickness is, you know, a little bit bigger around. This is just a nice way to protect the screen of your Tamagotchi, especially if you're going to drop it in a pouch. All right, there you go. Batty Bat Crochet Case Instructions. I hope you loved it. Thank you so much if you made it this far in my video for watching. Um, I really appreciate everybody all of your subscriptions and likes um those mean the world to me since i'm just starting out and of course um you can also check out my etsy store the link should be in the description as well as on my my channel page if you ever want to see any patterns that i'm doing or if you'd like to purchase the case or any other crochet item that i do 
Um, be on the lookout for more crochet tutorials to come. I have a lot of patterns that I've been working on, Tamagotchi and non-Tamagotchi related, that I'd like to upload um, and share those as well. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If I said anything wrong or if I, you know, gave <laughs> wrong crochet terms, I'm sorry. Um, I'm so used to just doing this by feel and just going by hand. It's it's hard to count it out and try to share it with somebody, but I wanted to do my best to kind of share this with the community. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.